Let's just stay in this attitude of uh, praise for just a moment in prayer. Father, we thank you that you are the God who saves us. You're the God who redeems us. You're the God who pulls us out of the miry clay. You set our feet upon a rock. Lord, we have so much to give you praise and thanks for this evening. Just as we've been singing here tonight, maybe just in your own life, you, you can identify the need for something different than the way you've been living in the bay, the way you've been walking, even just to hear people sing and rejoice, to see these lyrics, it just, it's just touching your heart, you're just like, I know I've got to get it right, I know I need to have God working in my life, and I just want to tell you, just as we sing, God loves you, he loves you so much that he sent his only son, think about that, to die upon the cross for our sin and then in him having been punished for our sin for those who confess him and believe in him they can have his righteousness the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus how do you get it you believe you believe you can't earn it you can't deserve it you can't do enough good on your own if that would have been the case then Jesus I promise you would not have come and he would have died on the cross you're here right now just right where you are you don't have to wait any longer just right where you are just say Lord I need you Lord I need you in my life I'm done doing it on my own I'm done running on on my own strength and my own power confess him We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. After the service tonight, if you pray to have the Lord come into your life, there'll be some of us up front that would love to talk to you about that and tell how you can grow more in that relationship with the Lord. But we are here to um, have a baptism tonight, and we have 11 people that are going to be baptized. And these are people that have basically done what we just prayed about right there, people that that want to follow and are following Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And so a lot of us know that. We understand baptism, and we ourselves have been baptized. But baptism is a, is a clear identification that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Baptism does not save you, but it is the answer of a good conscience towards God. You know, in a lot of places around the world, you can preach the gospel, and that might get you a year in prison. But if you want to baptize somebody, seven years in prison. Even the world looks at that and they see baptism as something that like that is like the, the last, you know, um, line. And you are now fully a follower of Jesus Christ. Now, that's, their, that's their perspective. We know that you're fully saved when you confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But this is a public testimony. This is something that is meant to be done publicly. That's why we gather together like this. We don't do it in private. We do it publicly and say, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. It's not going to cleanse you. It's not going to remove the filth of your flesh, but it will give you a, a clear conscience before God saying, I have stood up publicly and I have confessed Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I want to read about one of those occasions from the book of Acts. It's in Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Got a few verses to read here. It says, Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake the chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you're reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. 
And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Jesus is that lamb. Jesus is the one that had the punishment laid upon him. Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? So, obviously, as he preached Jesus Christ, he also told him that Jesus said that people were to go out and declare who he was, that he died, that he rose from the dead, and that he's coming back, and to call people to put faith and trust in them and to be baptized. And this Ethiopian eunuch was ready to do that. And so they see the water, and he says, well, what's holding us back? Can we do this now? And so Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. So these that are coming all have made this desire to be baptized of their own decision. This is something that they have said, we want to be baptized. We want to stand up. We've talked to them. They have all expressed their faith and their trust and belief in Jesus Christ. You're going to get to hear a clip from most of them about that. And so in just a moment, we're going to begin to baptize them. But before we baptize each person, there's going to be just a little video clip of them uh, introducing themselves and telling you about their faith. So let's go ahead and start those videos. Hello, my name is Piper and I'm 10 years old. I'm getting baptized because I love Jesus and um, I was at the night of worship and I decided that I was gonna become, like, I was gonna get saved. And then recently I decided to get baptized. Hi, I'm Andrew Campbell, and I'm nine. God had just been calling me to get baptized. I'm showing the world that I f follow God. My name is Joel Ung and I'm 11 years old. I'm getting baptized because I'm a believer of God and I'm not afraid to show it. Hi, my name is Jenna Ung and I'm 14 years old. I was raised in a Christian family, but just recently I was like, I want to be saved. <laughs> Baptism is an outward physical sign that you aren't afraid to be a Christian, and I want to show that to people.
My name is Macau Jackson and I'm nine years old. I got saved when I was seven years old. I took communion and I blessed them into my heart. I'm getting baptized to show how much I love God and that I can show him my love to him. My name is Javon and I'm 12 years old. And why are you getting baptized? I started getting older and started paying more attention in church and started making my way in relationship with Jesus. My name is Maddie Nelson and I'm 16 years old. Um, I became a Christian when I was young sometime in elementary school. I'm getting baptized today because I want to take that next step in my faith and I want to proclaim that Jesus is my Savior. Hi, my name is Kyle Snyder and I'm 21 years old. So I got saved when I was around 15 years old. I went to a youth camp with my church and that week it just really struck me and I actually got baptized that week. These years have been, there's been ups and downs all over the place and this year I've really just learned to put my faith fully in God and I just want to take that extra step again and just show my friends, family and everyone that I'm taking this step. Hi, I'm Ben Pabo. I'm 26 years old. Um, I'm excited to externalize what I've already decided in my heart. I like the symbol of baptism. I like how, you know, it's a symbol of, you know, being born again, you know, choosing to leave, leave a life of sin and uh, for hopefully a life of righteousness as best as we can in our flawed uh, body. So. My name is Hannah Beasley and I'm 19 years old. I got baptized when I was about 12, 13 and looking back I realized that I was definitely getting baptized just because I wanted to feel saved and the more that um, my life went on I just realized that I didn't even have a relationship with Jesus and last summer I really came to a point of actually knowing Christ and since then he's really put it on my heart to just be baptized and give that declaration of surrender and so now I'm actually going to do it.
Isn't it awesome to see these people making that profession of faith? Yeah. Yeah, so. Amen. Amen. Well, if you do this with me, Lord, uh, just raise your hands toward these, these, these individuals. Raise your hands to the Lord and let's pray over them. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and praise you for these who have made this public declaration of, of you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, we thank you for saving them, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you would fill them with your spirit. Lord, help them to walk with you, walk closely with you every day, Lord, to be so dependent on you, Lord. No matter what the circumstances are, Lord, as we've heard through some of these testimonies, Lord, that this past year, Lord, has been a, a crazy year, Lord. But God, they've, they've seen their need for you, Lord. And we just uh, thank you for opening up their hearts to you, Lord God. And we pray, pray your Holy Spirit on them that you would walk with them they would walk with you that they would be in your word lord and they would just draw closer to you every day and that we as a body here at calvary chapel lynchburg lord we just embrace them to love them and to help them walk with you lord we just pray this in your name amen and father as our brothers and sisters here have made this profession of faith amongst this cloud of witnesses lord we pray that you would open up their their hearts to just hear your word to chase after you with all their heart mind soul and strength lord give them that that passion for you that becomes this right here is not the venue by which their people are hearing their voice but lord they're going out into the marketplace they're going uh into their schools into their workplaces and they're professing with full boldness of the great majestic saving god that you are so, Lord, we ask you to be with them, give them that strength, help them as they walk in the power of your spirit. And, Lord, I pray that the body that is gathered here along with them, as we have witnessed this, that, Lord, you would speak to us and help us to hold these people up, to, to help them to walk rightly with you. Lord, as a body, Lord, help us to be all one as we carry on our life with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. just share a couple of verses um, with you but you know here's a here's a great thing when we um, are in the presence of the Lord this is what we're going to be doing and um, we're going to be worshiping him and um, you know we sense the presence of the Lord here he walks in the midst of his lampstand we're we're not orphans we're not deprived the spirit of the Lord is among us and so that is awesome but it's also going to be really awesome just to look at him when we do this don't you think and to see the Lord, and to see the Lamb who had been slain from the foundation of the earth. When we look upon Jesus, we're going to see the marks of the cross, of the crucifixion upon him. Because remember, when Jesus rose from the dead in his glorified body, what did he tell Thomas to do? He said, look at these. Touch, touch the prints in my hand. Touch my side. He bore the marks. When we look at him, we will see him as a Lamb that had been slain. Our Lamb. That had been slain. What a, what a day that's going to be. But you know, this is the thing I want to, to just remind us of here tonight before we, we close it out. Is that um, he's coming back for us. And we're going to be in his presence forever. Forever. And you know, some of us, we, I mean, probably all of us in here, we have people up there we can't wait to see. We, can't, we have people we can't be, wait to be reunited with, and that's going to be glorious, but it's not going to be as glorious as seeing Jesus. And, and we need to hold on to this hope that we have. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said to the Lord, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father 
except through me. Jesus gave us that promise that he is going to prepare a place for us and that we're going to be with him. And we need to hold on to that hope. In 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through 18, it says, I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, those brothers and sisters who have passed, they've died. I mean, it's not even called death. It's called sleep. It's rest. It's temporary. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself, he's not sending an angel to do this, the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first, those believers who have passed away. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. How do we comfort people when they have lost somebody they love? You comfort them with these words, with the words that we're going to be reunited together. But in the midst of this, I mean, what a day it's going to be. There's going to be one generation of the church that's going to be alive when the Lord raptures. He will shout, I think it's going to be a shout of triumph. And those that have died are going to be raised from the dead. And we are going to be snatched up. We're going to be caught up. Uh, Verse 17 says, Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up. It's harpazo, which means to snatch up. It means to go and seize something. Sometimes it can be used in a negative sense, but in this sense, Jesus is coming back to seize that which is his, that he has bought with his own body and blood, his bride, the church. And we're going to be snatched up. (laughs) We're going to meet the Lord in the air. And we don't know when this is going to happen. This is a signless event, meaning there's nothing that needs to happen for this event to take place. Second coming of Christ, all kinds of signs. You have the bowls, and you have uh, the seals that are being poured out and opened, and there's judgments, and there's fire from heaven, and there's volcanoes, and there's some terrible demons being let out of the abuso, and there's the Antichrist, and there's the, the two witnesses, and they're being put to death, and they're rising from the dead, and then at the end comes Jesus Christ. All kinds of signs lead up to the coming of Jesus Christ, but there are no signs for this event. And this is why it's a signless uh, catching up. It could happen in our lifetime. And the early church lived like this. They lived like the Lord was coming back in their day. And, And even as Paul wrote, he says, and we who are alive and remain they so believed the Lord was coming, or they believed the Lord was coming back so quickly, they didn't even think they were going to die. They thought he was going to come back, which is, I think, the way every generation of the church should be living. Like, we're not going to die before the Lord comes back. We are looking and waiting for him. But if he doesn't come back in our lifetime, we know that we will go to be with him. And what's that scene going to be like? I think the scene's going to be something like this Revelation chapter 4, when we pass from this life. It says, after these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne. Can you picture this? this is the, I think this is the very first thing we're going to see when we enter into heaven. And I saw a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne, an appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God, Before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures 
full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second like a calf, the third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures each had six wings and were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created. We were created for him. For him. Not for our own purposes. Not for our own pursuits, but that we might live to bring glory and honor to Jesus Christ. We are going to be in that scene. If you've put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, that is the scene that you're going to be a part of. That what Jesus promised there in John 14, that he's gone to prepare a place for you, that's yours. That, that, that day of the rapture, when we are caught up, or if we've gone before, we're going to still be a part of it. It's just your perspective. Either you're coming from the earth up, or you're coming from heaven down. I mean, either way, you're going to be in the air with Jesus, and you're, we're all going to receive a new body together. We're going to be in the throne room of God together. Can you imagine this scene? There's lightning and thundering. There's a sea of crystal with all kinds of lights. It's going to be the most magnificent light show you have ever seen because this light is generated from God himself. Jesus is the light of the world. It's going to be one amazing scene. And it's going to be all about the Lord. And this is our hope. This is what we are waiting for. This is why we purify ourselves and live holy lives. This is why we press on. We have not resisted sin to the point of bloodshed. Keep pressing on. Our hope is so amazing. It's so beautiful. The things that we suffer in this life, they are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. It can be hard, and I know a lot of your stories, and they are hard, but they are nothing in comparison to the glory that's coming. And so get your eyes set afresh on Jesus. Look up for your redemption draws nigh. And we need to live each and every day. Well, Troy, what if we live like this each and every day and we end up dying and he doesn't come back in our lifetime? So you're going to have lived waiting for the return of Jesus like he has told you to, which causes us to purify ourselves and to live holy lives, which causes us to want to tell other people, which causes us to give him praise and glory. I think you'll be all right with that when you get to heaven. I don't think you're going to be bothered by it one bit. We are to be a people that are looking and waiting. When John finished this book, he spoke about how the Lord was coming quickly. And what did he say then? Even so... Well, thank you for that reverb there. That was kind of like a perfect timing there. He said, even so, Lord, what? Come quickly. I know you're coming soon, but Lord, come quickly. Return. And we're going to be in his presence. So... Yes, we fight, we have battles, we have disappointments. Our bodies disappoint us, people disappoint us. But the Lord doesn't disappoint us. He is faithful in all of his ways. We may not understand what he's doing right now, but you know what? That's not part of our job description. He never said, understand all my ways, who I am, and the things I do. Actually, he said, you don't know my ways. They're higher than you. I do things that you don't understand. When we read of, the, of Jacob, when he thought everything was going against him, he says, all these things are against me. No, they're not against you, Jacob. Wait till the story's over. It's salvation that's being provided for you down in Egypt by your son Joseph, who was sold into slavery. It looks bad, but wait till the story's over. Have faith in God that he is going to complete the good work in you and that it's all going to make sense in his presence. And it will all be to the glory of the Lord. And so live for him. Know that he's coming back for you. And he has gone to prepare a place for you. And you will be with him. That is our hope. It's a good hope, don't you think? 
Why don't we stand together? We're going to go out with one more song. Yep. And um, I ask the, the pastors to come on up. Now listen, we, we had baptism tonight. Maybe some of you are in here and you prayed that prayer to just get things right with the Lord and you know you need to be baptized. Then um, we want to just invite you to come on up. Or if you have any other prayer needs, we'll, we'll take your name down. We'll be doing another baptism soon. So um, uh, don't hesitate to do that. Or when we make the announcement, you can make sure you sign up and you can be a part of this night. Now the rest of the week, tomorrow night, Tuesday night, uh, 7 o'clock, we're going to be here. We're going to be praying. We have specific things that we have in our heart to seek the face of the Lord for. Um, and then Wednesday night, we'll begin. It'll be a regular Wednesday service time at 7. We're going to have communion. We're going to spend some more time like this evening praying and asking the Lord to just be in our midst. And um, then Thursday, um, we're going to travel around the world. You don't need a passport. You don't need a vaccination. You just got to come to this room and we're going to pray for the missions and um, just asking the Lord to do a work around the world. So um, as we go out with this song, if you have a prayer need, we believe in the power of prayer. We believe exactly what Jesus said. He said that we should pray for one another. If you are in a place where you need to repent, then come on up. If you prayed to receive Christ, come on up. If you need prayer for healing, we'll call upon the name of the Lord and we'll ask him to do that. If you want to make say listen i know i got to be baptized i've been putting this off for far too long i'm going to be baptized the next time it's going to happen then we'll, we'll take your name down and we will be in touch with you uh, for our next baptism god bless you guys thanks for coming out to celebrate and just stand with our brothers and sisters that were baptized tonight and pray for them that they would be sanctified that they would obey the lord in all ways they'd be filled with the spirit and um, this would be just a special uh, time for them as they have made that public confession of Jesus Christ. God bless you guys.